What is Downtown Sports? My name is Downtown Stephen Brown, and in today's video, we are going to try to make the argument that a specific player from the Toronto Maple Leafs' has passed would make them Stanley Cup contenders right now if you were just to drop them in on the current iteration of the team. And maybe it's a little bit of a cheap theory or idea to just suggest that, yeah, if you replace the worst player on the team with a player that had a relatively positive impact in terms of analytics and on the ice, yeah, of course the team would be better. But the argument today that we're going to try to be making is Stanley Cup contenders can take the Maple Leafs from where they were before the season stoppage happened or where they are right now with a healthy roster and push them over the edge to say confidently yes that they could compete with the Boston Bruins that they could compete with the Tampa Bay Lightning that they could compete with any team in this league and undoubtedly have a chance at winning the Stanley Cup. Let's try to get this video to 70 likes. I mean, we've hit 100 a couple of times before. I have a lot of faith in you guys. I know that we could do it. But in today's video, we are going to be trying to make the argument and present evidence to say that Dion Phaneuf in his prime would make the current iteration of the Toronto Maple Leafs Stanley Cup contenders. Now, I know a lot of you have already shut the video off to this point, but no, I'm not talking about Dion Phaneuf in his prime while he was with the Calgary Flames. 20 goal score Dion Phaneuf while he was with the Calgary Flames. Someone who put up 40 to 50 to 60 points every single season. That's not who I'm talking about at all. Specifically, Dion Phaneuf, when he first got to the Toronto Maple Leafs in his first three or four seasons with the team. But specifically when talking about Dion Phaneuf, I want to look at his 11-12 season and I want to put some simple stats in some advanced analytics into some context and then talk about the way that he was used in Toronto after that season because it got really, really goofy after that. If we're taking a look at Dion Phaneuf's career in Toronto from 2009-2010 to the 2014-2015 season, looking at that 11-12 season, I'd say that's where Dion Phaneuf was at his best and probably most comfortable with the Toronto Maple Leafs, and he was able to produce an expected goals above replacement rating of about 8.1. And if we look at this season for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and we're saying, well, what's 8.1? It's very similar to what Jake Muzzin was able to produce this season with the Leafs. And if we contextualize those numbers a little bit further by taking a look at his offensive zone starts and his defensive zone starts, in the 2011-2012 season, Dion Phaneuf was used in a very neutral role, as we're saying here. It was basically a 50-49 split. Um, uh, after that, the Toronto Maple Leafs and Randy Carlyle specifically just said, uh, Dion, we're going to need you to play all the defensive zone shifts in the world. And they used him heavily, heavily, heavily in a defensive first position. And then afterwards, when Mike Babcock got to the team, they corrected that as at that point in Dion Phaneuf's career, he was done and the wheels had already fallen off. And I don't even necessarily know if the Toronto Maple Leafs would need someone to play um, such a heavy split, like a 60-40 split in the defensive zone right now. Maybe like a 45-55, maybe like a 47-53, something like that. Maybe something leaning a little bit more towards a defensive role. But just someone that can come in and give you some solid minutes at 5-on-5 five five and contribute elsewhere on the ice. And I mean, if you want to take a look at Dion Phaneuf's most common line mates during those seasons while well, he was in Toronto, it was heavily, heavily, very much Carl Gunnarsson and then Francois Boschman for a little bit at the beginning of that tenure. Cody Franzen, which would have been a really, really weird combination because neither of those players can skate very well, especially Cody Franzen. Keith Ollie who was also acquired in that trade when the Leafs first got Dion Phaneuf uh, from the Calgary Flames. Jake Gardner, Carbinian Holzer, who was still playing in the NHL with the Anaheim Ducks as of recently, Mike Koska, and then it kind of drops off the guys who he kind of sort of played with, but not all too regularly. Okay, but back to Dion Phaneuf here. So what are some of his strengths that he excelled with while he was here in Toronto that would complement this team right now? Well, he's a bigger body at about six foot four, two 220 pounds. So that would satisfy a need that the Maple Leafs definitely, um, they don't necessarily 100% need it on the blue line, but it would be nice if they had someone back there. And we all know that Dion Phaneuf, the Phaneuf train came chugging is what Jim Houston used to say in the old EA Sports video games. We all know how menacing and how clean he used to hit and how satisfying it was to just watch him hit people. I'm going to leave in the description of this video just the highlight video of Dion Phaneuf hitting people because 
that's a guy that really, really knew how to separate someone from the puck. And that's the key to hitting. You want to be able to hit the person because you're taking yourself out of the play and separate them from the puck, not just to hit someone for the sake of hitting someone. And, you know, he dropped the gloves a couple of times, and I believe he even fought Sidney Crosby one time. I'm I'm going to find that because I can remember that happening, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to say he did. I'm going to leave that in the description of the video as well. Okay, so we've covered the big boy element, dropping the gloves a little bit, throwing some major hits. The next thing that I want to talk about when it comes to Dion Phaneuf is his slap shot. Now, he got made fun of for it in Toronto a lot because he would stand at the blue line and wind up like a maniac and wire it off the glass and it would just be a clearing opportunity for the other team, basically, every time he was wide open. But... I mean, he did score 20 goals and 17 goals a couple of times, so he did have some shooting finesse to him. He did have some type of shooting skill. And I mean, in Toronto, he did score eight goals in his first full season with the Leafs and then 12 goals after that, nine goals in 48 games in the lockout-shortened year. But I'm not looking for Dion Phaneuf to lead the charge offensively 5-on-5 five five and bring back the point shot. I mean, we all know how hard he could shoot the puck. There's a video of him breaking the glass on a clearing attempt twice in Calgary in the same period. Um, but you would have thought that someone in practice would have skated over to him and said, Hey man, why don't you start taking shots from a little bit closer in? And that's where this idea kind of comes in. As I've mentioned it here on the channel before, the Maple Leafs are in desperate need of someone who can really shoot the puck on the opposite side circle to Austin Matthews on the power play. Now, preferably that player playing on the opposite side circle to Austin Matthews would shoot right-handed, and I mean, Mitch Marner filled that role for a little bit, but... He doesn't have the greatest of shots. I mean, hopefully William Nylander can develop into that guy because William Nylander's been a strong net front presence for the Toronto Maple Leafs this season, and that's a weird thing to say, but John Tavares has that role on the power play locked down, so having William Nylander in kind of that bumper high slot area on the ice is kind of useless. I don't know. I, I really like the idea of William Nylander on the opposite side circle to Austin Matthews on the power play because just learn how to shoot the puck from there. I mean, come on, you're getting paid enough money. But in this hypothetical scenario, we're going to have Dion Phaneuf there, and I think that Dion Phaneuf shooting from the circle, I mean, it's a little bit closer. Hopefully, he'd hit the net a little bit more, and with a shot as hard as his, um, yeah, it would probably make him more effective. It would make Austin Matthews more effective, and it would give the passers on the power play more options. Now, the 11-12 version of Dion Phaneuf that we're hypothetically placing on the Toronto Maple Leafs right now, he would be replacing Cody Ceci. And like I said at the beginning of the video, yeah, of course, if you were to take a player in his prime that was moderately productive and replace the worst player on the team, of course, that team is going to be better. But remember, we're trying to make this team a Stanley Cup contending team, and we're also trying to make the argument that Dion Phaneuf's strengths would really complement what the team needs right now. So... He also played on the penalty kill while he was here in Toronto heavily, almost exclusively. In fact, from the 2009-2010 season to the 2014-2015 season, no one played on the penalty kill more than Dion Phaneuf. So where are we at this point in the video? Because I think that if you could just get past the name and the face and just look at what this player would be adding to the Leafs right now, if we could just hypothetically pluck him out of the 11-12 season and bring him into the future and drop him onto this team, he's a bigger body, can throw some hits, he's not afraid to drop the gloves and stand up for some teammates, he can give you another shooting option on the power play, whether that be on the opposite side, circle to Matthews, or maybe in like a high slot kind of thing. He can play on your penalty kill. What's not to like about this player? Look, and I understand that Dion Phaneuf was a meme here in Toronto because it really didn't work out. And then it compounded with the contract and other things that were going on at the time. But it's not really his fault that the organization tried to make him into something that he wasn't. But he was also the team's captain. And I mean, you still do have players like Morgan Riley taking summer trips out to Prince Edward Island to hang out with the guys, to, 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 to talk to the guy, because he does present that leadership quality that a lot of people are saying that the Toronto Maple Leafs are lacking right now. Now, in the 2011-2012 season, Dion Phaneuf played over 25 minutes a night, and that's definitely not something that I would try to replicate. I mean, if we're taking a look at Morgan Riley this season, he was up over 24 minutes a night, but probably... Should have been closer to around 22 and a half, 23 ish minutes a night. So, if then we're dialing back Dion Phaneuf's minutes even more, he might have less points and less goals than he did in the 11 12 season. But does he then become a more effective player overall? Because he's a little bit more rested, a little bit more fresh. But then we're talking about where does he actually slot in 
to the lineup here. And unfortunately, Dion Phaneuf made six and a half million dollars that season, so I couldn't get the actual real dollars to work here. But where does Dion Phaneuf play on this team? Does him and Morgan Riley kind of jostle between playing on their offhand on the second pairing? Or does he play with Jake Muzzin and one of those guys play on their offhand? I mean, he's a left-handed shooting defenseman, so it's not the most ideal scenario in the world, but I still think that they could make it happen. They could make this work. Does him and Jake Muzzin kind of form like a Bash Brothers kind of thing? Or do you go best friends sort of thing? Morgan Riley and Dion Phaneuf, because like I mentioned before, the two of them are really close friends. Now, I understand the absolute storm that is coming to me in the comments section and the likes versus the dislikes on this video. Some people are just going to call me crazy, and I completely understand. I, I understand why this would be a hard idea or a hard hypothetical idea to kind of get behind. Um, so maybe I'm just flat out wrong. Um, but I do think that adding Dion Phaneuf or prime Dion Phaneuf, the best version of him that he was with the Toronto Maple Leafs, to this current team would make them Stanley Cup contenders. Now, like I said, if you could try to find a way to get past the name and the face and just look at the player himself, just objectively, um, I don't think that this is too hard to accept. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Could you imagine adding a second Jake Muzzin to this team right now? Wouldn't that solve a lot of problems? I mean, you can't tell me after watching those highlights that I'm going to put in the description of this video that Dion Phaneuf was not an electrifying player to watch on the ice. And I might regret asking this, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Am I crazy or does adding a player like Dion Phaneuf was in his prime, the best version of him that he was with the Leafs, that 11-12 Dion Phaneuf, is that good enough to push this team over the edge and make them definite Stanley Cup contenders? But hopefully you guys had fun with the video. I know I definitely did. So make sure to leave me a like on it and subscribe for more because more is always on the way. And guys, remember... Jan Phaneuf in his prime would make the Toronto Maple Leafs Stanley Cup contenders.